Today we will be discussing gene linkage and the process that led to its discovery. In order for students to understand this lesson, I expect them to already comprehend independent assortment, meiosis and crossing over, dihybrid crosses, the various modes of inheritance and the usual ratios that accompany them, and some typical genetic nomenclature, including dominant versus recessive traits, genes, alleles, heterozygous versus homozygous, and chromosomes. By the end of this lesson, students will understand that not all genes follow independent assortment when they are compared to other genes within the same cross. They will be able to explain why some genes don't follow independent assortment. They will understand that chromosomes carry groups of genes or alleles that determine a person's genetic makeup and they will be able to define the term of linked genes. As a quick review, the genes in a cell will separate and divide into the gametes in equal ratios of all the possible combinations. In this example, we are looking at a parent cell that has two particular genes. After cell division occurs, there are four different outcomes for the gametes, which each contain the different combinations. This dividing up of the genes occurs during meiosis. Meiosis is the cell division that occurs in order to prepare cells for reproduction. Each gamete in this body contains two copies of each chromosome. During meiosis, these chromosomes will replicate and then separate from their homolog. Finally, the sisters will each separate so that you are left with four cells, each with one chromosome in it. This means that each cell has one copy of a certain combination of genes, and this most likely varies from the other cells' gene combinations. Each gamete receives a very unique list of genes. Now that we have reviewed the basic concepts behind gene linkage, we can start to think about how it developed. Mendel believed that he could predict the inheritance of any allele because he based his ideas around the fact that each gene was inherited independently of all other genes. However, he focused on simple genes that would follow this pattern and ignored any complications. Years later, Morgan realized this oversight and began to search for a reason why the dihybrid crosses didn't always turn out the way he expected. Now, I want you to take a moment and think about this. Why is Morgan getting results that do not correspond with Mendel's expected results? One option that Morgan began to explore was chromosome theory and the possibility that chromosomes were the carriers of genes. Recall that chromosomes are not static. They are constantly crossing over and exchanging material with their other chromosome pair. So, is it possible that chromosomes are the carriers of genes? Let's think about that for a moment. Chromosomes appear during cell division and during meiosis, each gamete gets one copy of each chromosome. Chromosomes appear in pairs, just like genes, and chromosomes are much larger than genes and could easily hold many different genes. So, if multiple genes are in one chromosome, can that explain Morgan's findings? Go ahead and take a moment to consider this theory. If we consider the fact that multiple genes are located on one chromosome, then we also have to realize that some genes will be closer together than others. And because chromosomes are frequently exchanging information with other chromosomes, the chances of two genes crossing over together is higher if the genes are closer together on the chromosome. In this example, 
A and B are much closer together than C on the chromosome. So if a crossover event were to occur, there is a good chance that it would occur in between B and C and result in capital A and capital B being inherited together on the same chromosome and capital C being exchanged for the lowercase c. Now that the logistics of linked genes have been discussed, we can begin to form a clearer picture of what exactly it means to be linked. From our previous connections, linkage can be seen between two genes that are controlled by the same chromosome and are close enough to each other. The closer together two genes are on a chromosome, the more likely it is that they will be inherited together and in turn be linked. This linkage will remain even if crossing over occurs. For example, imagine the chromosome as a piece of string. You can cut it anywhere, but if two markers or genes on that string are close to each other, the chances of a cut occurring between them is very slim. This implies that there are different degrees of linkage that can be determined by exactly how close two genes are. In order to determine this degree of linkage, we first need to look at how chromosomes are measured. Chromosomes are measured in map units, and this can be very useful in determining the distances between two genes. If the two genes are 50 map units or more apart, they will follow independent assortment and act as if they are located on different chromosomes. If the genes are less than 50 map units away, they will appear linked. However, two genes that are three map units apart will appear more closely linked than two genes that are 40 map units apart. This map unit distance also correlates directly with the probability of linkage. The map unit distance corresponds to the probability that the genes will assort independently. For example, a map unit distance of 25 means there is a 25% chance that the genes will assort independently. Now that we have considered linked genes and the theory behind them, we can make some conclusions and summarize in order to ensure that these conclusions are in fact in line with the results. We discussed how each chromosome contains multiple genes and how the distance between two genes can determine how often random crossing over events occur between them. We also realized that some genes appear to follow independent assortment because they are on different chromosomes and some because they are far apart on the same chromosome. All of this led us to the theory that genes are that genes that don't follow independent assortment are linked because they are close enough together on the chromosome and they are also controlled by the same chromosome. Go ahead and take a moment to consider this one last question. Do all of these theories make sense and uphold all other discoveries in genetic studies? Hopefully you agree and now have a stronger understanding of genetic linkage and how it came to be.